Here we have a problem from section 15.1. This is the problem we did not do from the handout. So I will do it here in a video. So our problem is to determine and classify all critical points of the following surface here. So if I have a problem where I have to find the critical points and classify them, that means I'm going to classify them as local maxes and local mins. The first thing I'm going to do, step one, is to find where the gradient of z in this case is equal to the zero vector. So if I want to do that, that means I have to find the gradient of z. That means that the first component here will be z sub x. So I have to take the derivative of this with respect to x. So let's see, I have to bring down the 2, keep the inside the same, multiply by the derivative of the inside with respect to x. That only has x's in it, so use the chain rule. This does not have x's in it, so the derivative of this will be 0, and the derivative of that will be 0. So that is z sub x. Now z sub y, since this only has x's in it, that term will be 0. So I take the derivative of this piece. So I bring down that 2 and take the derivative of the inside, and I leave the inside the same. The derivative of 2 is also 0, so that's going to be z sub y. So that's my gradient. So really, if I want to figure out where my gradient equals 0, that means I have to solve the system minus 4. 2x minus 1 equals 0, and minus 2, y minus 1 equals 0. So this is what I have to solve, the system. I'm not solving each equation, I'm solving the system. Now in this case, the system is pretty easy because each one is in terms of one variable. So in this case here, this implies that I can say that 2x minus 1 equals 0, and this implies that y minus 1 is equal to 0. So here, y is equal to 1. Here, 2x equals 1, so x is equal to 1 half. i got to learn how to move the picture and look up at the screen a little bit more often. All right, so again, uh, this implies that 2x minus 1 is 0. This implies that y minus 1 is equal to 0. Solving each one, I get x equal 1 half and y equal 1, so my critical point turns out to be the ordered pair 1 half comma 1. Now that I have the critical point, the instructions do say to classify it. So in order to classify it, I have to use the discriminant. So step 2 is classify. And what I mean by classify, is it a local max, a local min, or a saddle point? With the discriminant D. Now, I have that here. This is what we're going to use. So in order to use a discriminant, I have to have f sub xx, f sub yy, and f sub xy. And then once I have that formula put together, I can use this information here to classify the critical point. Okay, so let's see. According to the discriminant, I need to find z sub xx, z sub yy, and z sub xy. Well, I'm going to put these guys here first. So z sub x is minus 4, 2x minus 1. z sub y is minus 2, y minus 1. If I want to find z sub xx, that's equal to, okay, so the derivative of this with respect to x is 2, and then I have to multiply by minus 4. So that'll be minus 8, just the constant. Then z sub xy is 0. Because if I take the derivative of something that has only x's in it with respect to y, it's 0. Then z sub yy is equal to, well, the derivative of this inside is 1. So it's minus 2 times 1, minus 2. And just for kicks, what's z sub yx? Well, the derivative of that with respect to x will be a constant, or that's a constant, so the derivative will be 0. And I put a x here, that should be a z. 
So those are equal. That means we're on the right track. Now I'm going to put the discriminant together. And again, this is a kind of a straightforward problem because everything's a constant here, but we're going to go through it anyway. So z sub x, x is minus 8. z sub y, y is minus 2. And z sub x, y is 0. So I get my discriminant is positive 16 greater than 0. So if I look at this situation here, so if my discriminant is greater than 0, I have to look at f sub, the sine of f sub x, x. And then I can determine if I have a min or a max. So let's see. Then I know that f, z sub x, x is negative 8, which is less than 0. So that means that if I have a negative f sub x, x, which is this case, so positive discriminant, negative f sub x, x, then I have a local maximum at x0, y0. So under this cases, we know 1 half comma 1 is a local max. Okay, great. Now something else it said at the top, it said that we should classify, determine and classify critical points and then use an online program to check your work. So what I did is I graphed it on that online program that we use in class. And uh, let's take a look at it. So here is the graph of our function. Now what I've done, if you can take a look at this, it's kind of hard, it might be a little bit small, but let me zoom in a little bit here. So this is the point that we had as a critical point, 1 half, 1, and then I found the z value by plugging it into our original equation. So I've graphed our equation, I've graphed our critical point, and you can see the black dot on the top is our critical point. I move it around and you can see that it definitely is a local maximum. So that's a really nice way to check to see if you're right. Hopefully this was helpful to you.